Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, one person is dead following a shooting on San Antonio's north side. We'll have more on the investigation. I think between uh, those of us that are here with eyes on the problem every day, uh, and those in DC that are the top decision makers, I think we can reach some sort of an understanding to try to truly make a difference in this issue. The death toll from the migrant tragedy has risen to 53. We have what's next in the investigation. Outside with live cam this morning, we're hovering right around the mid 70s here in town. And Mike is going to assure us it'll probably get a little bit cooler before another warm up. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is June 30th. Thanks for joining us. I hope you had a good week so far, and I believe the humidity is back. Yeah, I believe that's a, that's a fair assumption. Mike Ostrage yeah. is here to set us straight, and the answer is... Well, yeah, I mean, we've got that moisture still on the ground from the rain the other day, okay. so right. that's in, in a sense good news. Sure, and the other wrinkle is you're keeping an eye on the Gulf. Yeah, and that's not really not going to do much for us. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of the stray showers, but most of that's going to stay, unfortunately, well off to the east of us over the next couple of days. A couple of extra clouds. Maybe breezier? Uh, slightly. slightly. Yeah. It's, okay. it's not, again, really going to be that big of a deal. A few extra clouds around here, one or two stray showers. Uh, it's going to be kind of like what we were having prior to the rain event that we went through as far as, you know, okay, a shower or two going to pop up here or there later on today, mainly off to the east and to the uh, southeast. We've got some mostly clear skies as of right now. 75 degrees, 68 Bernie stage, same thing up there in Comfort, 74 in Converse, and the humidity, dew point temperatures, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere, Yep, they're back up into the uh, low 70s, upper 60s, low 70s. So more humidity out there. Again, some of this is being contributed to by the moisture in the ground from the rain that we had. There is somewhat of a uh, heat index in a couple of spots, but not too bad as of right now. Mold did go up yesterday considerably with all that moisture hanging around here from the rain, 35, 40. And throughout the rest of today, we're going to make it up to 88 degrees at noon, 94 for high temperature. Again, a shower or storm. 20% chance for one or two of those, primarily down to the southeast. Pretty much the same thing tomorrow and Saturday. But on the downside, as rain chances go out of the picture, what comes back in the picture? A lot more heat. It's going to be a hot 4th of July. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, San Antonio police say a young man was shot and killed on the city's north side last night, and now police are looking for the person responsible. The shooting happened around 10 p.m. in the 200 block of Rex Street. That is near North Main Avenue and Horace Street. Now, police were initially called to a shots fired incident a few blocks away. However, when they got there on Rex Street, they found the minor, whose age was not provided at the time, on the ground, dead from those gunshot wounds. Now, the suspect is on the run. However, police say they do believe they have identified the shooter's vehicle. Police say a woman is accused of killing an off-duty Poti police officer. According to the Austin Police Department, 26-year-old Lindsay Smith is accused of intoxication assault. This all happened around 2 a.m. yesterday. Investigators say she was driving in a construction zone when she hit the off-duty officer. That victim now identified as Jeffrey Richardson. We're told Smith stayed at the scene. Police took her into custody. Her bond now set at 250 thousand dollars. This morning, four people now charged in connection with the human smuggling tragedy here in San Antonio this week. It comes amid questions over how a truck packed with more than 60 people inside could pass through an immigration checkpoint without being inspected. ABC's Monica Sar Abdi has more. This morning, the suspected driver of a tractor trailer at the center of the deadliest human smuggling case in U.S. history faces federal charges that could carry the death penalty. 53 migrants from Central America and Mexico have now died after being packed into this sweltering truck abandoned in San Antonio Monday. The memorial at the site growing. This mother in Honduras says two of her sons died in that truck. She says they were looking for jobs in America. Vida diferente. So they could have a different life and achieve goals and dreams, she says. Authorities say the suspected driver, Omero Zamorano, pretended to be a passenger. But they say this surveillance image from a security checkpoint shows him behind the wheel. Three others are now in custody in connection with the smuggling operation. Officials say as a record number of migrants flood the southern border, the volume of traffic and lack of resources make it impossible to inspect every truck. Today I'm announcing that uh, Texas 
is going to add additional truck checkpoints. The Texas governor now promising more resources, including strike teams in high traffic areas to find smugglers profiting off the desperation of people in search for a better life. Meanwhile, the local sheriff is pleading for help from the Biden administration, whose policies critics say are encouraging more migrants to make the dangerous trek north. I think between uh, those of us that are here with eyes on the problem every day uh, and those in D.C. that are the top decision makers, I think we can reach some sort of an understanding to try to truly make a difference in this issue. Ten survivors from that truck in San Antonio remain hospitalized. Three are in critical condition. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Today, Justice Stephen Breyer formerly retires from the U.S. Supreme Court after 28 years and will pass the torch to Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson. She will be officially sworn in today, becoming the first black woman on the nation's high court. Meanwhile, the justices are expected to hand down two more major decisions very soon. Perhaps as early as today, one looks at how aggressively the Environmental Protection Agency can regulate greenhouse gases from power plants. The second is on immigration, with the justices deciding the fate of President Trump's remain in Mexico policy that sent most asylum seekers at the border back to Mexico to await their claims in U.S. courts. These final two decisions come following the judicial decision on abortion. Thousands of Americans have been impacted by flight delays recently, and now some politicians are demanding action. Senator Bernie Sanders is the latest. He sent a letter to the Department of Transportation urging penalties for airlines with significant delays and cancellations. For domestic flights delayed more than two hours or international flights delayed more than three hours, Sanders proposes a $15,000 fine per passenger. If a flight is canceled, Sanders wants airlines to pay $55,000 per passenger. This doesn't include weather-related situations, but rather schedules impacted by staffing issues. The Transportation Department says it has already taken several actions to protect consumers. The last surviving Medal of Honor recipient from World War II has died at the age of 98. Herschel Woodrow Williams, affectionately known as Woody, was decorated for his heroism during the Battle of Iwo Jima in the Pacific. President Harry Truman personally awarded the Medal of Honor to Williams at the White House back in 1945. Woody didn't, uh, his service didn't end there. He served the VA for 33 years and created a foundation to support Gold Star families. West Virginia Governor Jim Justice has ordered flags to be flown at half staff and offer to hold a state funeral in Williams' honor. There are also plans for the body of West Virginia's hero to lie in state at the Capitol in Charleston. And time now, 437 and 76 degrees for now. Well, it's been the talk of Spurs fans over the past few days, especially the last few hours. A big trade involving DeJounte Murray. He is out of here. We'll have the latest in what the Spurs get. Boo. Okay. I know, you're disappointed. <laughs> Very disappointed. We're trying to remember the big picture here for our Spurs. Uh, okay, we'll try. <laughs> Taking a look outside with live cam, 76 degrees for now. We're going to be checking in with Mike later on. We'll be right back. In sports, it's been the talk of the town. DeJounte Murray, who came to the Spurs in 2016, has been traded to the Hawks for three first-round draft picks and a swap of one future first-rounder and for Danilo Gallinari. This is arguably the boldest move in Spurs team history since you normally build a team around an all-star rather than trade him. But it will now be just two years from now where Murray will be in line for a max deal worth $40 million a season. His trade worthiness will probably never be higher at this moment at just 25 years old. So here's a rundown of what the Spurs get out of the trade next year. A 2023 first rounder via Charlotte. Then a first round pick in 25, a 26 swap first round pick. And then another first rounder in 2027. And again, the Spurs also pick up forward Danilo. Gallinari. Meanwhile, Spurs Summer League team held their first workouts yesterday. The team also features the Spurs third draft pick and number 25 overall Blake Wesley out of Notre Dame. Their Summer League games that tip off one week from tomorrow in Vegas. And while Spurs head coach Greg Popovich was there, it will be assistant Mitch Johnson who will coach the team in Vegas. I think that in general it's the same every year, right? It's, it's enthusiasm, it's excitement. You know, these kids want to prove whether they can uh, you know, should be at this level or that, you know, justify why they were drafted. Um, but I think Blake is obviously a very dynamic driver, very athletic. His speed stands out when you watch him. 
And I think Malachi has a little bit of a throwback game in terms of kind of crafty, uses some change of speed, uh, finds some spots, ways to score. So I think they both have knacks and, and skill sets that will help us. Here's a look at the schedule. Summer League tips off on July 8th at 4 p.m. You can find full coverage on KSAT.com. Go Young Spurs, go! San Antonio Mission is taking on the Rockhounds in Midland last night. Missions were not able to get anything going till the seventh inning. Got a score on an RBI single. However, an outfield assist put an end to their rally. Missions coming up short with a final score falling to Midland, two to one. All right, still ahead, a first look at what's being called the first official case of CTE in American soccer. And welcome back. It's 445. Scott Vermillion, a former professional player who died in 2020, is now the first known case of CTE in American soccer. ABC's Ariel Rochef has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, CTE in the sport of soccer. You heard about it, but around soccer, you, there was no talk of CTE. There was nothing. So we had no idea. Former Major League Soccer player Scott Vermillion is the first in Major League Soccer revealed to have suffered from the condition. And now his family is opening up about his posthumous diagnosis. If we can help anybody, one person, two, however many people we can help, then to us, that makes our tragedy uh, something worth the loss of our son, dad. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll hear from a leading expert in the field of CTE about the activities that could put soccer players at risk and what preventative measures can be taken. With your GMA First Look, I'm Arielle Reshef, ABC News, New York. A quick look at the roads with TransGuide. Looking out there at I-37, a loop 410, a little bit of problems there. We're going to be checking in with Stephen in our next half hour. And also I-10 and Hackberry there. Things are moving. Mike Gostreit joins us now and uh, keeping tabs on a system in the Gulf of Mexico. It sounds like the Texas coast and maybe even Houston's about to get yeah. some, some heavy rain. They'll get some rain. There were some uh, pretty good showers and a couple of thunderstorms on the coast yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and... Yeah, it, it's fun to talk about this thing and, and get your hope, but don't get your hopes up for really anything from this because it's not going to do basically anything for us. And yeah, Adam was saying last night, it doesn't really matter what you name it. It's gonna, it is what it is. Even if it does get named, it doesn't, yeah, it's just going to stay off to the east of us. So anyway, first of all, this was from uh, yesterday and really, really nice picture. A few extra clouds hanging around there. We don't have that many clouds around uh, this morning. And when I walked outside, yeah, I could actually see a couple of stars out there. We'll probably have a couple of them and then a few more developing later on today. And uh, throughout the next 12 hours, temperatures are going to be staying in the mid 70s here. And then then we are going to warm up, obviously, in through the 80s, 86 at 11 o'clock, 88 at noon. And the wind's going to be out of the east primarily, 10, 15, maybe 20 miles per hour. Bit of a breeze this afternoon. Got the 10, 20 percent chance for a stray shower thunderstorm. It's going to be primarily off to the east. One or two of them out there, not really that big of a deal. So here's the uh, satellite and radar loop. And first of all, down here to the southeast, as this loops back on through, some of those showers and thunderstorms late yesterday afternoon. So here's this disturbance in the Gulf and it's starting to you can see a bit of a counterclockwise rotation, but this thing is primarily going straight up to the north. Here's what this computer model looks like uh, later on this afternoon. Again, one or two of those showers or a thunderstorm, a couple of extra clouds. Yeah, this model does have even one or two of them out there to the west of us, but uh, the, the better chance I think is going to be further off to the east, especially going into tomorrow. And there's the heart of that system coming in Galveston, Houston. That's where all the heavy rain is. We will get a few extra clouds kind of wrapping around the, uh, the backside of that. And yes, there will be a few of those showers, a couple of thunderstorms even tomorrow afternoon. Um, but again, they're going to be very, very few and far between one or two of them on Saturday as well. But then that's pretty much about it. There's the low, which is going to be sliding again straight up to the north and just sitting on top of Houston. Basically, then it's going to start to fizzle on out and then so <laughs> 
look what's going to be happening here for uh, next week. That high is going to be building on in here, and if that looks like deja vu, uh, it kind of is because that's where that thing has been sitting all month of June, and it looks like it's going to set up camp almost right on top of us, southern half of the country. And that means it's going to be very, very hot. That thing just suppresses any rain chances, pushes down in the atmosphere, and we are going to be looking at, hate to say it, triple digit temperatures, I think starting Monday in through the, at least the first half of next week. So we're going to be up to 88 today at noon, partly cloudy skies, and then a high temperature 94. The average normal high temperature today is 93. So if we get up to 94, that would make every single day except one day above the normal high temperature in the month of June. Tomorrow, one or two of those showers again, uh, maybe Saturday, and then temperatures really start to uh, crank up there. And I think uh, just going to bite the bullet and put triple digits Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. You know, we were talking about firework dangers and how dry everything is even after the rain. City of Bernie canceled their big fireworks oh, really? display out of safety concerns and worried about how dry things were up there in the hill country. Yeah, yeah I mean, even though we did, you know, a lot of folks got two, three inches of rain, sure. that really... Yeah. Didn't, do Didn't really anything. move the needle, did it? No. Oh, no. And think about some of the wildfires that we had, you know, a few weeks back. So Absolutely. just might want to put that off. All right. So again, just want to let you know, Bernie, no big show this year uh, for 4th of July. 451, 75 degrees. And coming up next, some um, Hollywood producers say they want to reinvent James Bond. Plus, R. Kelly is sentenced to 30 years in prison. Here are your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, 814, Fireball 8, Daily 4, 1140, Fireball 2. Cash 5, 2, 4, 30, 34, 35. A lot of Texas, 9, 10, 20, 21, 28, 48. And your Powerball numbers, 8, 40, 49, 58, 63, Powerball 14, Power Play 3. Good luck. R. Kelly is sentenced to 30 years in prison. Plus, some producers say they want to reinvent James Bond. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Singer R. Kelly plans to fight his 30-year prison sentence handed down Wednesday in a New York courtroom. Kelly convicted of sex trafficking and racketeering, his lawyer Jennifer Bonjean saying the sentence was too harsh. We were prepared for it, um, and we are now prepared to fight uh, this appeal. For us, it's just the beginning of the fight, frankly. Kelly's team was hoping for the minimum, 10 years in prison. Ahead of sentencing, a victim identified as Angela told Kelly in court, I pray that God reaches your soul. We all have our secrets. A reinvention of James Bond is coming, so says longtime Bond producer Barbara Broccoli. She tells Deadline they don't have a script for the next film and they can't come up with one until they decide how to approach the next film because it's a reinvention of Bond. James Bond. And she claims no one specific is in the running to take over for Daniel Craig, who ended his run with last year's No Time to Die. Actress Cameron Diaz coming out of retirement for a Netflix movie with Jamie Foxx. It'll be called Back in Action, Diaz's first film since 2014's Annie. Production starts later this year. And happy birthday to Jamie Foxx's In Living Color co-star David Allen Greer. He's 66 today, while Parenthood star Monica Potter is 51. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. What about all these places? Time check, it is 456, 75 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the House Committee investigating the January 6th Capitol attack has issued another subpoena, this time to a former White House counsel. We have a preview. And Major League Baseball could soon be seeing robot umpires behind the plate. We have details coming up in your morning Tech Bites. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Sky looking at Loop 1604, Petranco, and now Loop 410 at Evers where things are moving. But Stephen Cavazos is here and we will be getting the latest on this situation at I-37 at Loop 410 after the break. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this hour, San Antonio police say they have the man who killed a 40-year-old in custody. The president said something to the effect of, I'm the effing president, take me up to the Capitol now. Plus, more fiery testimonies expected today as hearings over the riots at the U.S. Capitol continue in Washington. Outside with live cam, humidity and temperatures now down into the mid-70s. We know a big warm-up is coming, but what's going to happen in the meantime? 
as we wrap up the month of June. We'll talk to Mike in a moment. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, June 30th. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, yesterday I kind of missed having that rain. It was a nice surprise the day before. I knew not to expect it, but miss it already. I will say this, Mike. It, again, it wasn't quite as hot yesterday, but okay. we know those days of relief are, 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 are dwindling. We did make it up to 97, though, yesterday. Okay. So, yeah, we should be down a couple of notches today. A few extra clouds, uh, about the same situation. And, you know, but when you put it in perspective, the normal high is now 93 degrees. You know, it's been that way for about a week or so. So, and this is almost what you would expect, obviously, in the end of June and 1st of July. 75 degrees right now. That bottom number is higher than it's been in the past couple of days. Dew points at 70. And part of that is the moisture in the ground is contributing to the higher humidity this morning. And 94 for a high temperature later on today. So, again, right about normal, one degree above that. Yeah, just to kind of split hairs. The aquifer in yesterday's reading did go up one foot, so it did benefit from some of the rain. Of course, still have uh, watering restrictions out there. And like I say, just check with your local municipality as far as any restrictions where you live. Mold is on the high side. It really shot up yesterday, 35, 40. All right, there is a disturbance down there in the Gulf of Mexico. We've been talking about this for the past couple of days. And um, unfortunately, it is going to be taking a path just about straight to the north, right in there toward Houston. So we're going to be just kind of getting the, the outer edges of it, the left-hand side of this thing. It will throw a few showers in here. We still have that chance for one or two stray showers or a thunderstorm around here later on this afternoon. Even tomorrow, perhaps one or two of them on Saturday. Nothing like what we had a couple of days ago, though, unfortunately. So partly cloudy skies this morning. Again, just a couple of storms today. 94 for a high temperature. Uh, tomorrow, 95. Again, a storm or two, about the same thing on Saturday, up a degree or so. Then, yep, it is going to be hot. We are looking at triple digit temperatures starting on the 4th. I can say hotter than a firecracker and continuing into at least the first half of next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Steve Cavazos. Morning, sir. What's going on? Good morning, Mike. Good to see you. Right now, 37 to 410. Uh, drivers wouldn't be so happy to see this. So let's get a look at TransGuide. Wider look shows us that we're actually seeing some guard repair taking place. Uh, crews were actually out there yesterday following a crash that was reported by TxDOT around 1230 in the afternoon. So it's unclear how long they've been out there, but we know that the work continues this morning. Uh, this is actually in the southbound lanes of 37 at that interchange of 410. So you can see a little bit of red that's already building on the screen, but it's nothing too bad. I'm thinking this will probably wrap up in the next few minutes or so, but we got to make sure that we're prepared for that in case our travels are going to take us through there. Wide look at the map doesn't really show a whole lot else to talk about. Of course, those active construction scenes, and it does look like we may have a crash somewhere off the northeast side. We'll detect that and find out how it impacts the commute. But for now, if your travels are going to take you here at the Alamo City, we are green across the board. 25 minutes on I-10. That journey from Bernie is going to be in the green in those eastbound lanes. 28 minutes if you're traveling in 281 southbound from Bolverde and a 26 minute drive time. Not too awful coming in from New Braunfels on 35. One last look here at 37 at 410. Hopefully we'll have a better update, but we're going to break down some more uh, some more construction spots. So make sure you have your phones handy. We'll have that QR code up in just a little bit. Guys. Stephen, thank you. See you again in a bit. New this morning, San Antonio police make an arrest in the deadly stabbing of a man at a home on the city's southwest side. This happened back in September of 2021, and our Jonathan Cotto joins us live. Jonathan, can you give us an update? Good morning, Stephanie. That's right. This is a case that dates back nine months and the suspect wanted for murder is finally in custody. Now, police tell us it was a DNA sample that came back as a match to the forensic evidence found at the crime scene and on the murder weapon used in the stabbing that prompted detectives to issue an arrest right away. Now, we're talking about 20-year-old Sebastian Lee Hernandez, who is accused of being involved in the deadly stabbing of 39-year-old Christopher Ruel Olivares. Now, the suspect was arrested late Wednesday at his home in central San Antonio. Now, back in September, police were first called out to the 300 block of Kirk Place. Now, this is a home on the city's west side, close to 7.30 in the morning. They found the victim in the front yard dead and no trace of any suspects. Now, police say it wasn't until Crime Stoppers released more clips of surveillance video from the day of the crime. It showed the suspect and that's what led to a credible lead. Now 20 year old Hernandez is facing murder charges. Of course, this is a story that we're going to continue to follow closely and update you as more information is made available. Reporting outside of public safety headquarters, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. 
Thank you, Jonathan. A memorial mass will be held this evening in remembrance of the migrants found abandoned in a tractor trailer on San Antonio Southwest side earlier this week. It'll be at San Fernando Cathedral at 7 p.m. located at 115 Main Plaza by the Archdiocese of San Antonio. Meanwhile, authorities now say a fourth person is in custody. 28 year old Christian Martinez facing charges in the case. Court documents so show he was in Palestine in East Texas yesterday. Three suspects are also accused in the case. That includes 45-year-old Omero Zamorano. Investigators say Zamorano and Martinez were talking about the alleged smuggling event on a cell phone. A search warrant for that cell phone then led authorities to Martinez. Two more suspects are in custody, but as of right now, they're facing only federal weapons charges. The migrants were found Monday, and now the death toll has risen to 53. That includes some who were taken to area hospitals right now. There are still 11 are still there in the hospitals, including children. Several are still listed in critical condition. The San Antonio Mexican consulate says their phone lines have been flooded with calls of relatives looking for information on the deceased and survivors in Monday's semi-trailer discovery. Now, one of those families is the family of Pablo Hernandez, a 20-year-old left Reynosa, Mexico earlier this month. The family heard from him on Wednesday when he was in Valfurias, Texas, headed to Houston. I know he was walking with a group of people and that the people he was with left him because he couldn't walk. He was cramping up and he couldn't keep going. The Mexican consulate says 27 of those who have died have been identified as Mexican nationals. The Mexican and Central American consulate offices reporting that they're working together to share information and coordinate the reunification of families. One person in the hospital has already been connected with a parent. Well, days after the 53 people died after being trapped inside that big rig, San Antonio Fire Department is now caring for the needs of their own. The department has put an emphasis on mental well-being of its crews who responded to the aftermath of the tragedy. Assistance was immediately available through the department's peer counseling team, as well as through trained psychologists and chaplains. The help is needed as first responders deal with this tragedy and the shooting just over a month ago out in Uvalde. All right, so these resources are always available no matter what. The department understands their jobs aren't done until everyone is cared for, including each other. And time now, 507 and 75 degrees for now. Still ahead, why the FCC commissioner is urging Apple and Google to remove TikTok from their app stores. And a big update in a court case involving the death of a three-year-old boy. Outside with live cam, one day closer to the 4th of July weekend. Can you believe that is already here? A lot of you have plans or maybe doing some traveling. We're going to look ahead at the weekend forecast with Mike Ostrage, and we'll check on traffic with Stephen Cavazos coming up. Right now it is 5-11, a murder trial now over involving a suspect accused in a three-year-old's death. Now the parents of little Renee Blancas Jr. are speaking with Kset. We have been following the trial against Eric Jardino for weeks. He was accused of shooting the three-year-old while the child was sleeping in the back of his family's car on New Laredo Highway. Now that was back in 2017. His parents picked out Trevino out of a photo lineup leading to his arrest. Now a jury has acquitted Trevino of capital murder. Trevino remains in jail facing other charges related to other crimes, including an attempted jail escape. Now to a major development in the January 6th investigation. A man long considered a critical witness has now been subpoenaed. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. This morning, ABC News has learned former White House counsel Pat Cipollone is evaluating a subpoena from the January 6th committee. Cipollone could argue his conversations with former President Trump fall under executive privilege, but sources say he may sit down for written testimony to discuss his critical role in the final days of the Trump White House, including on the day of the Capitol riot. The president said something to the effect of, I'm the effing president. Take me up to the Capitol now. The subpoena comes after the explosive testimony from former Trump White House aide Cassidy Hutchinson, who claims Cipollone voiced concern that Trump would be exposed to criminal charges if he traveled to the Capitol. Cipollone said something to the effect of, we're going to get charged with every crime imaginable. Hutchinson testified that Trump knew some of his supporters had weapons, but still demanded they be allowed to march to the Capitol. To me, that's the most powerful evidence uh, we have yet of the president's knowledge uh, that the crowd was armed, his willingness to bring that armed mob to the Capitol. 
Some of Hutchinson's testimony had been called into question, including her claim that Trump lunged at a Secret Service agent when he refused to drive him to the Capitol. ABC News has learned the agents involved are willing to testify under oath that no such physical altercation took place. In a new statement, Hutchinson says she stands by all of her testimony. And the top Republican on the committee, Liz Cheney, speaking to ABC's Jonathan Carl last night, said she believes Hutchinson. Do you have any doubt at all in anything that she said to you? I uh, am absolutely confident um, in her credibility. Uh, I'm confident in her testimony. Cheney spoke at the Ronald Reagan Library last night, saying now is the time for Republicans to make a choice between loyalty to Trump and loyalty to the Constitution. We have to choose because Republicans cannot both be loyal to Donald Trump and loyal to the Constitution. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, 513, 75 degrees. And coming up next, Snapchat officially launches its new subscription program. We're going to tell you how much it costs. And could robot umpires be coming to Major League Baseball? That's coming up in Text Bites. If you haven't tried Dawn Power Wash Dish Spray, what are you waiting for? It's Dawn's fastest and easiest way to clean everyday dishes. On simple messes, just spray, wipe, and rinse. On tough messes, its spray-activated suds have five times faster grease cleaning power to break down grease without water. Plus, its targeted spray cleans even hard-to-reach places better. So, replace your dish soap with Dawn Power Wash and spray your dishes clean. Okay, everyone, our mission is to provide complete balanced nutrition for strength and energy. Yay! Ensure complete balanced nutrition with 27 vitamins and minerals and ensure complete with 30 grams of protein. For Imprint, this is Lisa. Hi, I'd like 50 welcome wows and 300 customer. I love it. Promotional products from For Imprint are certain to deliver. Ooh, yes. Wow. I love it. Find some wow now at forimprint.com. For Imprint, for certain. In today's Tech Bites, privacy concerns for TikTok. A top FCC official is calling on Apple and Google to remove TikTok from their app stores. Commissioner Brendan Carr says there are concerns user data is being accessed in China. Spokespeople for Apple, Google, and TikTok have not commented. Snapchat is now offering an optional subscription. So-called power users can pay $3.99 for Snapchat Plus. Added features include the ability to re-watch a story and pin a friend to the top of your chat history as a BFF. And Robot umpires could soon be coming to Major League Baseball. The commissioner says he wants an automated ball strike zone system by 2024. He says one idea is to have robot umpires transmit the call to a human umpire using an earpiece. Now, even in the summer, those computerized umps won't ever overheat. After all, they'll be surrounded by fans. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. No. <laughs> I thought it was cute. <laughs> Go ahead and check nah. in with Stephen Cavazos. Okay, Mike <laughs> says no also. I mean, I'm on the fence about that one. I don't know. Uh, it was clever, but uh, not this early in the morning. <laughs> All right, let's get a look at the roadways right now. 37 at Pecan Valley. It looks like things are getting a little bit busier, actually. They were getting a little bit closer to the 530. A lot more folks uh, out on the roadway, but be on the lookout because we did have some crews out for, by the 410 interchange near 37 after they were repairing a guardrail following a crash from yesterday. But it does look like those crews already wrapped up are in the midst of wrapping up, but we still see a slight buildup in the interchange there. So you got to watch out for that and make sure that you prepare. Let's go ahead and give you a wide look at the map again. Copy and paste situation. Not a whole lot to talk about here. Just some of those active construction spots. One of the areas that we want to remind you of is over here on State Highway 151 on the west side of San Antonio. Barrier removal still taking place. That's current, but should be wrapping up on Monday. That's the 4th of July already. 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. But as a reminder, those crews tend to get out there a little bit earlier, so you got to prepare for that as well. During that time, you can expect a single westbound mainland closure from West Military to Ingram Road. And again, that will be for barrier removal. Grab those phones and uh, scan your QR code that's there on the screen by opening the camera app. Tap the center of the screen that will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page and that has a list of all the closures taking place in your area and anything else that will impact your drive time. Just don't forget scroll to the bottom of the page. I'm a little disappointed in you. Wait, why? Well, I should look down. <laughs> yes, yeah. he struck <laughs> out with that. Oh, uh, hey, that was good. That's a good comeback. That was yeah. with well, the, the fans puns there. So yeah. nice save.
It was a hanging curveball, and uh. he didn't hit. <laughs> Okay. I got a foul. We've got a streak okay. going. Okay, yeah. got a foul. Yeah. I got a foul. Uh -huh. Yep. <laughs> okay. All an improvement on Mr. Timbert. <laughs> yes. Aww. All right. Enough of that for right now. Uh, beautiful picture out there, and uh, the orange glow. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. And we got a lot of clear skies right now starting off. It is pretty warm. It's pretty humid out there. 75 degrees. Normal low is 74. So this is what you would ex just about expect this time of year. Uh, 75 also New Braunfels. A couple of 60s out there in portions of the hill country. And these numbers are up right around 70, give or take, upper 60s. And so there is more humidity compared to the past couple of mornings. A lot of this is still due to some of the moisture in the ground from the rain that we had. All right, we're going to be staying relatively steady in the next couple of hours with mostly clear skies, a couple of clouds around here this morning. Then I think we see a, a few more clouds later on this afternoon. Uh, some of that is going to be thrown on in here from that disturbance, which is going to start to work its way up the uh, up the coast and then also in toward the eastern portion of the state. We're going to be up to 88 degrees at noon and then 94 for a high temperature. So down from yesterday's 97 still we hit 94. It's going to be a notch above normal. And so that would leave us with just one day this month that has had a below normal temperature. And that was a couple of days ago. And also the 20% chance for a stray shower, thunderstorm or two. This is what the uh, computer model looks like right now. A lot of activity down here along the coast. And then, uh, like I said, a couple of extra clouds hanging around here. One or two showers trying to pop up later on this afternoon. Again, hit or miss. It looks like a lot of these may be uh, focused right there along the escarpment with some of that flow coming on in. And then tomorrow, about the same situation. A lot more activity way off here to the east of us and just one or two of those showers. And again, some of these clouds kind of being thrown on in here. So that's the system in the western Gulf of Mexico. That little disturbance down there, which, um, yeah, close, but unfortunately not close enough as far as we are concerned. Hurricane Center's also been watching this area of clouds, which, I mean, just looking at it really doesn't look like much. It is, as the Hurricane Center is labeling it, a potential tropical cyclone and it may develop, but if it does, it looks like the path is going to be taking it pretty much straight to the west. So that would not have any any effect uh, on our weather whatsoever. As a matter of fact, everything is kind of being getting pushed away from us as time goes on. And what that means is it's just going to be heating up and rain chances are going to be just about nil. They will be nil 88 degrees at noon, partly cloudy skies and then a high temperature today up to 94. One or two of those showers or a storm. It's few and far between not going to be like what we had a couple of days ago, unfortunately, and tomorrow roughly the same situation Saturday, couple of them in the afternoon here or there at a degree each and every day. And then we get up to 98 on Sunday. Yep, I went with it 100 Ouch. July 4th, 5th, 6th. Yeah, you went there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's it's going to be happening. And of course, even hotter down to, to the west and southwest along the, the Rio Grande Valley we, there. So. We are not blaming you no, at we, all. We don't. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. We, we just don't approve. That's all. <laughs> 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 523, 75 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, Julia Roberts and George Clooney reunite in a new movie. Plus, Steve Carell talks about the appeal of the Minions. Welcome back to A-List Hollywood stars teaming up on screen for a fifth time. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. Oh, come on. You've got to be kidding me. Excuse me, ma'am. I need to sit somewhere else. We used to be married. Worst 19 years of my life. We were only married for five. I'm counting the recovery. Here's your first look at Julia Roberts and George Clooney in Ticket to Paradise, as bitter exes forced to work together to stop their daughter from making what they think is the same mistake they made 25 years ago. The romantic comedy arrives in theaters October 21st. Oh, yes, please. Uh, 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 As Minions, The Rise of Gru, the fifth Minions movie, prepares to take off in theaters, star Steve Carell recalls his reaction to the first film, Despicable Me, back in 2010. You never know. You know, you do the voice, the animators take it, the directors take it, and turn it into this un unbelievable thing. And I remember thinking, it's not condescending to kids. It's it's smart, and there's a little bit of an edge to it. There's a little bit of sophistication to it, 
that doesn't feel like a kid's movie. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Pretty adorable. Yeah, looking forward to that one. 527, 75 degrees. And still ahead, what's next for Ketanji Brown Jackson as she becomes the first black woman sworn into the U.S. Supreme Court later today. And get ready for packed roads this upcoming holiday weekend. We'll tell you how many friends you'll have alongside you if you're driving for July 4th. A lot of friends. And Taco Bell and Cheez-Its are joining forces. We're going to tell you about the two new menu items that could be coming soon. Making headlines today, today the U.S. Supreme Court welcomes the first black woman to the bench to be sworn in as a justice. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 75 degrees for now. We were in the 90s uh, for most of this week, but uh, already looking at the triple digits for next week. And good morning to you. It is Thursday, June 30th. Thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this last part of June. It was a nice little break, uh, but now we're getting ready for a true July. Back to reality, you might go through Hage. Yeah, this is one of those where you just got to kind of grin and grit your teeth and talk to your teeth. Yeah, because it's going to be getting hotter as, uh, as time rolls on. 75 right now. The normal low average is 74, so in that ballpark, dew points up to a 70. And some of that's uh, being contributed, uh, or the moisture in the ground is contributing to the, the somewhat higher humidity. This morning, winds out of the east primarily, about 6 miles per hour. Easterly wind throughout the day, 10, 15, a little bit breezy at times. 335, I'll get it right, 3540 for the mold count yesterday. It definitely shot up thanks to, again, that moisture from the rain that we had. We're going to be up to 94 today. We did hit 97 yesterday and a 20% chance for one or two showers out there. I think we keep a couple of more clouds around, keep temperatures a little more in check, slightly closer to the normal high of 93. And then as far as rain chances, the next couple of days, yeah, one or two of them out there still. Nothing like what we had a couple of days ago, and that number is definitely going to be going up a little bit here and there. And then, yeah, like uh, Steph was alluding to, we're going to be up to triple digits. Will that be the case on the 4th of July? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, what's going on, Stephen? feel like I'm on vacation over here, Mike. There's really nothing to talk about, but let's get a look at the roadways right now. 1604 Petrenko, if your commute is this early, thankfully nothing is going to slow you down, at least at this point. But as we get a look around town, there's 37 at 410. That interchange. We saw some flashing lights out there a little bit earlier, but that's because crews were working to repair a guardrail following a crash from yesterday. But that has already wrapped up, and you can see things are moving nice and smoothly through a lot of these shots at Transguy. But 35 at Weedner looks like we're getting a lot more traffic out there. We'll find out what's going on in just a little bit. But as we get a wide look at the map, thankfully, just a lot of green on the screen. A lot of those active construction spots you can see along the loops there, so you got to prepare for that throughout the day. But if your travels are going to take you here to the Alamo City, there's no need to worry or no need to rush because we have these inbound times for you 29 minutes on I-10 westbound. If you're traveling in from Seguin, about half an hour, a little more than that on 87 if you're coming in from Lavernia and a 28 minute drive time traveling in from Floatisville. So looking good there and looking good here on Transguide as well. 410 at Ray Ellison. Things are off. People are moving. We'll have more updates on construction and we'll check out some of that slowdown we spotted off 35 at Wiedner in the next few minutes. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. Today will be historic. For the first time ever, a black woman is being sworn in to the United States Supreme Court. The court will also make a decision on two big cases, and you can watch that live starting around 915 this morning here on Case at 12. And for now, CNN's Amy Kiley reports on that and those new decisions, decisions facing the court today. <laughs> Today will go down in the history books as incoming Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson becomes the first black woman to join the U.S. Supreme Court. I have developed uh, a methodology to ensure that I am ruling impartially. Jackson's midday swearing in ceremony coincides with the start of retirement for outgoing Justice Stephen Breyer. She's becoming the court's 104th associate justice, and she's already standing out in that long line of predominantly white men. Do you agree with this book that is being taught with kids that, that babies are racist? Senator. Jackson is a historic addition to a historically unpopular court. Gallup reports confidence in the institution is at the lowest it's ever recorded. 
Polls indicate a strong majority of Americans disagree with the court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. I couldn't carry this baby to term and have my husband have to bury both of us. That makes this a notable moment from Jackson's Senate hearings. And I know that my judicial role is further constrained by careful adherence to precedent. The Supreme Court says the opinions it's releasing today are the last of this session, and a protest is already scheduled for tonight. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. The Department of Health and Human Services has issued new guidance on patient privacy following the overturning of Roe v. Wade. It affects the privacy rule in the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, better known as HIPAA. Providers may now disclose protected health information to law enforcement without a patient's consent in, quote, narrow circumstances. The guidance gives examples of situations where providers might question their responsibility to protect health information. Those examples include if a provider suspects a patient has induced an abortion, if law enforcement asks for patient information, and if a patient tells a provider they plan to seek an abortion elsewhere. A new poll just released shows that most Americans do not approve of the job that President Joe Biden is doing. A new CNN poll of polls shows his approval rating is down to 38 percent. He lost just one point from where it stood earlier in the month. It says the president is doing worst on the economy, with one poll showing just 28 percent of Americans approve of how he is handling it. He's also not doing well on guns with just a 36 percent approval rating pandemic is Biden's strong spot with 53% of Americans saying they approve. Overall, that poll shows 85% of Americans say the country is headed in the wrong direction, a jump from 78% who said the same thing last month. We are about to see the universe in a whole new way. NASA says it will soon release the deepest image of our universe ever taken. The image, one of many high-res pictures being released July 12th, all taken by the James Webb Telescope. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson says we've only seen a glimmer of what the Webb Space Telescope can do. NASA says the initial goal for the telescope was to see the first stars and galaxies in the universe. And that mission has exceeded their expectations. Boy, talk about a teaser there, huh? I know. Can't wait to see these images. It'll be pretty cool. Yeah. Time now, 537 and 75 degrees for now. Still had Taco Bell testing out a new menu item that could soon be at a restaurant near you. And also next, if you're planning to hit the road during this upcoming holiday weekend, you're going to have to watch out for 42 million of your fellow Americans as well. And outside with live cams, we head into the long holiday weekend. Mike, we'll have your July 4th forecast coming up. Time check 540. The 4th of July weekend is predicted to set a road trip record. As CNN's Jen Sullivan reports, AAA says more Americans will hit the road over this Independence Day holiday weekend than ever before. Prices are sizzling hot at the gas pump and soaring for air travel. But those high costs aren't expected to keep Americans home this July 4th holiday weekend. Prices have gone kind of through the roof, but we're still looking at traveler numbers that will be approaching where they were in 2019. AAA predicts 42 million Americans will take a road trip of 50 miles or more. That's more than ever. And despite gas prices hitting a record in June. And if you're traveling by plane this Independence Day weekend, skies will also be a frenzy. AAA predicting 3.55 million people will travel by air. Still, that's only 7% of expected weekend travelers. That's the lowest share since 2011, when the economy was still rebuilding from the Great Recession. AAA says the lowest average airfare is about 14% more expensive this year compared to 2021 and getting ready for potentially long wait times at the airport. If you're traveling for the 4th of July, expect things to be chaotic and try to hedge your bets. Travel experts from Scott's Cheap Flights say it's a sign of a busy, chaotic, expensive summer travel season. There are fewer planes in the sky. You know, security lines are stretched both at home and abroad, and folks are really struggling to serve everyone equally. <laughs> And it's not just travel that's more expensive. Your July 4th barbecue may also cost you more this year. That's according to an annual survey from the American Farm Bureau Federation, which found the average cost is up 17% this year. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Meredith Wood. They were burning those burgers, Steph. Yeah, I don't think they're doing a good job. 542, 75 degrees. And coming up next, a furry friend is standing by to be adopted. We're going to check in with the San Antonio Humane Society.
if you are looking for a little kitty cat yeah. here, we Kim's got the perfect one. Who's this baby? This is Popsicle. Um, Popsicle is a three month old little kitty cat that came into us. Um, she is so sweet right now. She's Obviously, you can't calm. see it right now, but yeah, I don't know if you can see her eyes, the most beautiful, kind of a. Yeah. I don't know, a mustardy yellow color. Beautiful. She's really Short calm. hair, easy to take care of. And yes. yeah, for being a kitten, she's really, really calm. Yeah, yeah. she's all wrapped up. Um, we have her 4th of July blanket on because we've got a great special coming up. Oh, do you? So we do, we do. So it's our Sosie and Sasha's um, Star Spangled Spectacular, uh, July 1st through the 3rd. All our cat and kitten adoptions are waived. Oh, wow. Yes, okay. yes, so come and see us. And remember, because it is, I mean, Cat season, kitten season has just been yes, off the charts this year. Yes. Two cats are really no different than one. They right, take care exactly. of each other. Um, They're great playmates. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Entertain it's, each it's not other. Like having two dogs, two cats. Yeah. So <laughs> go adopt two. Hey, make it three while you're Make at it three, it. So, yes. Sure. Hello, kitty cat. There's those beautiful eyes. Yeah, oh, and then you open the space up for another cat to come up. So, okay. yeah. Well, absolutely. If you like more information on little popsicle there, Head on over to the San Antonio Humane Society, 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461. Thank you, dear. Thank you. In your morning consumer headlines, after 106 years, Rolled Gold is getting a new look. The pretzel brand's latest bag design will land on shelves this summer to commemorate the anniversary. Rolled Gold, made by Frito-Lay, also marking the occasion by giving away more than $106,000 in gold bars. It's Gold Hunters campaign involves spotting rolled gold in the background of iconic TV shows, movies, and sports that span the decades. Taco Bell is joining forces with Cheez-Its for two items that are being tested out on the fast food giant's menu. The first is the big Cheez-It Tostada, which is made up of a large Cheez-It cracker 16 times the size of a regular one. What? Inside the <laughs> super-sized cracker, yeah, they're small, is ground beef, sour cream, lettuce, cheddar, cheese, and tomatoes. The other product is a big Cheez-It Crunch Wrap Supremes, which substitutes the usual Tostada shell with another giant Cheez-It cracker. Right now, these extra cheesy meals are only available for the next two weeks in a Taco Bell in Irving, California, but they could soon expand the meals if it's successful. Oh, come on, Irvine, don't be selfish. Right? Spread the good news and share that share menu cheeses. item elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be a hit. I think it'll do well here. We love cheese. Mike is somewhat Mike's skeptical, yeah. but would nodding that, his head. Would that be better than like, uh, Nacho cheese Doritos. Is it a little milder? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. It's, to, it's a different. Of. Steven, would you yeah. try it? I'm making this face. I'm like, eh. no, <laughs> I would. No, thank you. No, thank you. But you know, Taco Bell's been rolling out. I mean, they have that ATM too. I mean, come on. Like, they, what are they going to come up with next? So their own line of sneakers. You never know. But <laughs> they wait. probably have Crocs, right? Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> hey, you never know. We may be wearing Crocs underneath these desks. You don't know what we're wearing. But, Crocs uh, and socks, very comfortable. Let's go yes, with it. yes, it's a thing. <laughs> All right, let's get a look at the roadways. Steph and I were actually just talking about yesterday. Yesterday was quite the busy day on the roads. Today, the opposite. We're really not seeing a whole lot of activity activity out there, but we're getting closer to that 6 a.m. hour. So, you know, the drill more people are going to wake up, get out on the road. So you got to make sure you give yourself plenty of time. But look at US 98 couples already looking like a morning rush hour out over there. But that serves as a major gateway for a lot of people coming in from Castroville. So keep that in mind. We'll see more people as the morning does roll on. Did have a stall here of 281 Southbound at Nakoma Street. Looks like that is cleared out or not causing any issues anymore. But we'll have to watch that area closely. As a reminder, if you have any big road trips uh, for the upcoming weekend, make sure that your cars are working properly. Overall, look at the map just so it's the same thing. Lots of those active construction spots. Here's another one, State Highway 123 in Guadalupe County. We'll remind you of this. This is striping operations. Started on Tuesday, but should be wrapping up tomorrow. But keep in mind, those uh, crews are going to get out there a little bit before 8, to, uh, 8 in the evening, 8 in the morning to 530 in the afternoon. And that's when that should be wrapping up. But during that time, you can expect single lane closures in both directions from Angel Lane to FM 477. So no worries back here on TransGuide, though things are moving just fine. We'll continue to watch roads closely and give you those updates right here on GMSA. Guys, have you noticed how Crocs are kind of back in fact? I don't know if you say fashion mm -hmm. with Crocs, but uh, <laughs> or back in favor with like teenagers. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, you know, Rudy's yeah. got a couple. Yeah, they've and, a, and they've got the little decorations yeah. they can put all in the, the little. Yeah, the little. Um, custom Crocs. Highly personalized what were those Crocs. Things? I don't know. They're like, they're little snap -its. You can snap. They're mm -hmm. like. Uh, they have a name? They personalize. They oh. do, but we're too old to even remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah little, like little Decorations. Thingies. They're called little thingies you put on little the Crocs. Little thingies. So. Yeah, there you go. I don't know either. I guess I'm too old too. I'll look it up.
Function over form, man. Crocs and socks, really comfortable. So, just saying. Seriously? Mention it. <laughs> I'm saying that for a friend. Okay. For uh, a friend. This is a really cool picture. Leave me alone. Leave yeah, me yeah, alone. Yeah. Uh, a Cara Cara out there at the uh, Jimbo Blair and Bernie. Very neat picture. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAT Connect shot right there. So we've got a lot of clear skies right now. We'll have a few clouds hanging around here this morning and then a couple of more later on today. All right, the month of June, one that I think a lot of us would like to forget. Today, we are forecasting one degree above normal. So if that is definitely the case, then one day, just a couple of days ago, the only day in the month of June that the high temperature was actually below the normal average high temperature. And we had about 17 days that, and that set a record of triple digit readings. Of course, then there was a lot of record high temperatures and the hottest day was of course, on the 12th at 105 degrees, average temperature uh, about five and a half degrees above normal. Not what we really want to hear. Right now, we are at 75 degrees, 69 Rio Medina, 68 Bernie Stage, and comfort's down to 66 degrees as of right now. Temperatures will stay fairly steady this morning. We've got a little extra humidity out there thanks to some of the moisture, well, not only in the air, but also the moisture in the ground which is adding to the uh, humidity factor and we'll make it up to 80 today at uh, nine o'clock this morning up through the 80s in the late morning hours. A couple of more clouds are going to start to move on in here later on this afternoon and it's not going to be cloudy skies just socked in or anything like that. Plus we do have a 20% chance for a stray shower, a thunderstorm or two. Um, not anything like what we had a couple of days ago. I don't think anything popped up yesterday and there was that small chance for it. We're going to be up to 94 for a high temperature later on today, but we'll have enough humidity left over to where we are going to have heat index readings in the upper 90s and then right around 100 or low hundreds, especially down to the west and down to the uh, the southwest and get ready for triple digits, not just in the heat index scale, but also just on the thermometer as we go on into the uh, first week of July. 88 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature is going to make it up to then 94, a shower or two, maybe a thunderstorm or two. Again, very, very few and far between. Same thing tomorrow, same thing on, uh, <laughs> on Saturday, and things start to warm up. And then 98 Sunday, and we're looking at triple-digit temperatures by Monday for the 4th and going into Wednesday. Mark just handed me a note mm -hmm. and said the charms on Crocs are called Gibbets. 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 Yep. Gibbets. 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 Shoe charms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how many do you have? <laughs> <laughs> I don't own Crocs right now. Yeah. Rudy has two, but, or no, three. We can't find them, though. Um, oh. One was a Baby Yoda, and one's a Norwal, and the other one's like a little rose, but it looks like one of the, the rose from Beauty and the Beast. Cute. Yeah. Very Maybe KSAT should come up with KSAT gibbets. KSAT Crocs. Ah. Wow. We'll keep you posted. We could sell, <laughs> sell those like hotcakes, For right? For summertime. Right? Yeah. 553 now, 75 degrees. And speaking of summer, the summer movie season is heating up in July with new releases from Marvel Studios and a trio of animated features. We're going to have a preview next. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. Kevin, Stuart, Bob, and the rest of the Amber accomplices are back in Minions The Rise of Gru as the 12 year old Batty seeks to become a supervillain. Minion Mayhem commences July 1st. Kids, get to pop. Viking. Thor Odinson. Actually, it's the story of how Thor went from dad bod to god bod, only to find out mighty Thor. Jane? Find out what is even happening when Thor Love and Thunder lands in theaters July 8th. You wanted to be a samurai. Fun, isn't it? Now go get him. Samuel L. Jackson and Michael Sarah lead an all-star voice cast in Paws of Fury, The Legend of Hank. The animated adventure hits theaters July 15th. Tell me what's going on? Hell no. no. Daniel Kaluuya and Kiki Palmer star in Jordan Peele's Nope. We're not saying it's aliens, so you will have to find out whatever it is. The Nope's into theaters July 22nd. What do I have here? <gasps> Squeezy Bruce! Squeezy what? Dwayne Johnson and Kevin Hart are super-powered...
Signs in DC League of Super Pets, with John Superman Krasinski and Keanu Batman Reeves as their heroic human counterparts. The Fur Flies, July 29th. Catching a double feature in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Looking to clean up your yard but need some tools? San Antonio's Community Shed may be able to help. They have lawn mowers, leaf blowers, tree pruners, and other tools you may need. So how can you borrow an item? We have a link to the website so you can fill out a form. You can check out tools on Thursday and Friday mornings. Just click on this article on ksat.com. Straight ahead in GMSA in the next hour, we've got consumer, consumer tips rather on how to get a good deal on a brand new car in the midst of record inflation. And Transguide right now, so far, so good for the most part on the road. Stephen Cavazos will have an update on how the commute is looking on this early Thursday morning. We'll be right back. I'm Jonathan Cotto. It's been nine months and police say they finally have the suspect wanted in connection to a murder that dates back nine months ago in custody. Coming up on GMSA, we'll have details of that arrest. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 75 degrees, a little more humid this morning than it was yesterday morning. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Time to rise and shine. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, June 30th. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining us. I hope you had a great week. Uh, I enjoyed the break, but now we have to prepare for, you know, good old heat. Almost July heat. Yes. But right now, let's enjoy what we have. And I see the glimpse of a beautiful sunrise out there early this morning, Mike Ostrage. It's going to be a beauty. Yeah, just like yesterday, it is uh, fantastic out there. And it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, they're working on it. Here yep. we go. In three, two, there, there you go. Ah. Oh, that is uh, yes, there's a beautiful sunrise this morning. One or two little uh, clouds plane taken off as well. Temperature right now uh, is 75 degrees here in town. Same thing at Stinson 73 Kelly Converse as well at 73. And we do have uh, mold is definitely on the uh, the high side around the area. And we are going to be and I should have been over at the other camera. And that's what messed everything up. Can I go over here to the other camera? Did they already change it? Okay, well, because I was going to show this. And anyway, see, it's the end of June and we're getting into the holiday spirit right now. So uh, it is going to be seasonably hot today, mid 90s, and we do have that 20% chance for a couple of showers out there. Not really a great chance, nothing like the past couple of days. I don't know if you want to me to get you know, out of the way of what's to come next week because we're looking at more triple digit temperatures. We'll have all the details of the weekend forecast and take a look at what may or may not be kind of brewing in the tropics. That's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on, sir? Yeah, I have a pretty sunrise in the back of me as well, Mike. Let's take a look at US 90 at Medeo Creek. We know a lot of folks are going to be heading down US 90 in the next few minutes. We'll get to those travel times, but thankfully we've really not seen a whole lot out there this early in the morning. It's been pretty quiet. But keep in mind that as the morning does tend to roll on, so do those issues. So you got to make sure you drive carefully wherever your destination is going to take you. But as we bring you to the wide look of the map, it's the same situation. Unfortunately, though, looks like we may have a crash that popped up somewhere near Bandera and 410. We'll take a closer look and find out how that impacts the drive time. But for now, just a lot of those active construction spots. Got to make sure that you watch out for that. And if you're going to be heading into San Antonio, again, those travel times, as promised, 28 minutes on I-37 coming in those northbound lanes from Pleasanton about half an hour coming in from Highway 90 in Castroville. So no real big delay there. And your arrival from Lytle should be about 16 minutes to the downtown area. So we're not concerned about anything that we've seen or are not seen just yet, but we'll continue to watch the roads closely and have more updates. And especially in the next few minutes, make sure you have your phone handy. We're going to be talking some construction that'll be coming up in the next few minutes. Mark stuff. Stephen, thank you. New this morning, San Antonio police make an arrest in a deadly stabbing of a man at a home on the city's southwest side. All right, Jonathan Goto joins us live now. And Jonathan, can you give us an update? Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Mark. Well, this is a case that dates back in nine months, and the suspect wanted for murder is finally in custody. Now, police are telling us it was a DNA sample that came back as a match to forensic evidence found at the crime scene and on the murder weapon involved in the stabbing. Now, that's exactly what prompted detectives uh, to issue an arrest warrant right away. Let's take a look at the video images that show the moments that 20-year-old 
Sebastián Lee Hernández was accused of deadly, the deadly stabbing of 39-year-old Christopher Joel Olivares. Now, the suspect was arrested late Wednesday at his home in central San Antonio. Now, back in September, police were first called out to the 300 block of Kirk Place, a home on the city's west side, close to 7.30 in the morning. That's on the city's southwest side. Now, they found the victim in the front yard dead and no trace of any suspects. We're told police uh, didn't have any information on the suspect until Crime Stoppers released some surveillance video that showed the suspect and that led to a credible lead. Now, 20-year-old Hernandez is facing murder charges. Of course, this is a story that we're going to continue to follow and bring you the latest as more information is made available. Reporting outside the public safety the headquarters, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Authorities now say they have arrested a fourth person in connection to that deadly smuggling case here. 20 year old Christian Martinez is now facing charges. According to court documents, he was found yesterday up in Palestine in East Texas, not far from Tyler. Three other suspects are also accused in the case, including 54 year old Omero Zamorano. Investigators say Zamorano and Martinez were talking about the smuggling event on a cell phone. A search warrant for that phone led authorities to Martinez. As far as the two other suspects in custody right now, they are only facing federal weapons charges. And questions are now being asked as to how a truck packed with more than 60 people inside could pass through an immigration checkpoint without being inspected. ABC's Monica Sar Abdi has more. This morning, the suspected driver of a tractor trailer at the center of the deadliest human smuggling case in U.S. history faces federal charges that could carry the death penalty. 53 migrants from Central America and Mexico have now died after being packed into this sweltering truck abandoned in San Antonio Monday. The memorial at the site growing. This mother in Honduras says two of her sons died in that truck. She says they were looking for jobs in America. Vida diferente. So they could have a different life and achieve goals and dreams, she says. Authorities say the suspected driver, Omero Zamorano, pretended to be a passenger. But they say this surveillance image from a security checkpoint shows him behind the wheel. Three others are now in custody in connection with the smuggling operation. Officials say as a record number of migrants flood the southern border, the volume of traffic and lack of resources make it impossible to inspect every truck. Today I'm announcing that uh, Texas is going to add additional truck checkpoints. The Texas governor now promising more resources, including strike teams in high traffic areas to find smugglers profiting off the desperation of people in search for a better life. Meanwhile, the local sheriff is pleading for help from the Biden administration, whose policies critics say are encouraging more migrants to make the dangerous trek north. I think between uh, those of us that are here with eyes on the problem every day uh, and those in D.C. that are the top decision makers, I think we can reach some sort of an understanding to try to truly make a difference in this issue. Ten survivors from that truck in San Antonio remain hospitalized. Three are in critical condition. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Well, efforts underway right now to find families of the victims and survivors. The uh, Mexican consulate here in San Antonio says their phone lines have been flooded of co with calls for relatives looking for information on de deceased and the survivors in Monday's tra tractor trailer discovery. Families with missing loved ones are worried and fear the worst. One of those is the family of Pablo Hernandez. The 20 year old left Reynosa, Mexico earlier this month. The family heard from him Wednesday when he was in Falfurious, headed to Houston, and as I said, they fear the worst. I know he was walking with a group of people and that the people he was with left him because he couldn't walk. He was cramping up and he couldn't keep going. The Mexican consulate says 27 of those who perished have been identified as Mexican nationals. The Mexican and other consulates say they are working together to share information and coordinate the reunification of families. One person in the hospital has already been reunited with a parent. And happening tonight, a memorial mass for the migrants found abandoned inside that tractor trailer. It will be held at San Fernando Cathedral at 7 p.m. And organizers say it will be a multi-faith memorial and prayer vigil. And if you can't make it, you are encouraged to join at your own congregation or in your front yard at 7 p.m. 
Turning now to COVID, Metro Health issuing a reminder to celebrate the 4th of July safely. Our COVID risk is rising. Right now, Metro Health puts that risk at high. Metro Health reminding people to celebrate the upcoming holiday by masking up in crowded indoor spaces. Testing can also have help, and they're encouraging you to stay up to date with your COVID-19 vaccine and those boosters. And speaking of vaccines, the Biden administration reached an agreement yesterday to buy 105 million doses of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine. The deal includes options for up to 300 million doses and is worth up to $3.2 billion. The vaccines are set for delivery by early fall when health experts worry COVID-19 cases may begin spiking again. The vaccine purchase is being funded by part of the $10 billion that was reallocated from current response efforts. Both adult and child vaccines are included. It's what Spurs fans are still talking about this morning. DeJounte Murray, who came to the Spurs in 2016, has been traded to the Atlanta Hawks for three first round draft picks and a swap for a future future first rounder, plus forward Danilo Gallinari. This is arguably the boldest move in Spurs team history since you normally build a team around an all star rather than trade him. But it will now just be two years from now where Murray will be in line for a max deal worth $40 million a season. His trade worthiness will probably never be higher than it is at this moment in his career at just 25 years old. All right, so here's a look at what we get. Spurs get out of the trade <laughs> next year, a 2023 first rounder via Charlotte, then a first round pick for 2025, a 2026 swap first round pick, and another first rounder in 2027. Again, the Spurs also pick up forward Danilo Gallinari. <sighs> That's a big deal. It is a big deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, I see the big picture, but I'm still not happy. <laughs> Good luck in Atlanta, DeJounte. Yes. You will be missed. 610 to 75 degrees. And still to come, an FCC official calling in Apple and Google to remove TikTok from their app stores. We're going to tell you why in today's Tech Bites. Now is not the best time to buy a car, but there are some useful tips to help you get a new vehicle if you really, really, really need one. Details coming up after the break. And taking a look outside with a live cam. Ah, beautiful shot out there this morning. We love that. 75 degrees for now. We'll be right back. Welcome back. 614 inflation is hitting everyone hard, especially people in the market for a new car. And if you're car shopping, ABC's Alexis Christophorus has some tips to try to help save you money. Like everything else these days, car prices are skyrocketing. The average price for a new car last month was just over $47,000, the second highest ever. That's up more than 13% from a year ago. Now is not a good time to buy a new car. But what if you need to buy a new car? Experts have some tips to help you try to find a good deal. First, figure out exactly what you want and then have some alternatives. Certain brands may cost you less than other brands for the same type of car. You can figure out some cars that are similar to what you were looking for originally that maybe are less sought after and have greater availability. Because demand for new cars is high, buyers have been paying well above the sticker price lately. But choosing a different type of vehicle might save you money. If you go buy a full-size pickup or you go buy a large SUV, those are popular, so you're going to pay for that. If you want a deal, then look for the types of vehicles that people aren't buying as much, and that's things like sedans and hatchbacks. Make sure you have financing in place when you're shopping by getting pre-approved for a loan. Definitely check out car buying apps and local dealership websites to see what's available. And consider widening your search to areas farther away from your home to find more available cars. And if you find a car you like, don't hesitate. Because in this market, it's very much a seller's market and whatever is available is going quickly. So when you buy your car, you have to be ready to go. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. All right, now 616. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. I almost want to take a selfie right now, and not because I like this pocket square, but because I like what we're seeing in the back here. 35 at San Marcos. Let's get a wide look at Trans Guide because we're actually getting something that we don't see every day, which is the downtown skyline and the sunrise in the back. So we want to make sure that drivers obviously stay focused, but enjoy the view while you can. Let's go ahead and get a look at the map because it's still been the same situation throughout the entire morning. A whole lot of nothing to talk about other than those active construction spots. One of the areas, though, we want to make sure you're prepared 
prepared for us here off US 90 over on the west side of Bear County. Metal guard fence installation. This started on Monday, June 27th, but that is going to be wrapping on Friday, July 1st. That's tomorrow. So we're finally reaching that end game here, but nine in the morning to five in the afternoon is when you can expect that work to be done. Always like to say this. It uh, crews tend to get out there a little bit earlier, so it's always good to try to beat them if you can. Single main lane closures in both directions right there at the Montgomery Road. Mentioned the phones earlier. Great, great now. Uh, great time to bring them out and open your camera app. Scan that QR code by tapping the center of your screen. That's going to take you directly to the KSAT traffic page, and that has a list of all the closures that are taking place in your area. Just don't forget, scroll to the bottom of the screen, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Uh, still hanging on to the 90s. Yeah, uh, we're going to be closer to a normal high temperature later on today, which has definitely not been the situation throughout the month of June. Uh, so far, the only day below normal, of course, was two days ago when we had some of that rain. Right now, 75 degrees. The normal average low temperature is 74. So we're within we're in the ballpark. Dew point is on the higher side, that top number, and that's due in part to some of the moisture in the ground coming out, and that's helping to with the humidity factor out there. But at least we did get some of that rain. Here's another look at that uh, sunrise. It is absolutely beautiful out there. It is going to be a nice day. We'll probably see some more clouds moving on in here as the uh, the day rolls on. All right, the aquifer going all the way back to first of the year since we are halfway through the year, and it has not been good. Of course, we had that bit of a bump there right around, uh, say, middle of of February, but then basically it has just been dropping steadily for the past well, about five months after that uh, little bump right in there. And of course, you want to check with your local municipality as far as what the uh, watering restrictions are. 75 degrees, we're going to stay fairly steady for the next couple of hours and then really start the warm up once that sun gets higher up in the sky and make it up through the mid and upper 80s throughout late morning. We'll start to see a few more clouds move on in here. 88 at noon and then, yeah, we do have a small chance 10-20% chance for a stray shower or a thunderstorm to pop up. Again, I got to emphasize nothing like a couple of days ago, just one or two of them here or there. And yeah, 94 is going to be one degree above normal. Satellite and radar picture going past going back the past 12 hours really didn't have much that uh, popped up at all yesterday. Of course, there was that small chance and nothing really ever materialized. There was a lot down here to the uh, the southeast and a few more of these showers are starting to pop up right there along the coast. There's the disturbance out there. It's kind of a, a low in the Gulf of Mexico, and this is the one that had looked like may give us a better chance of rain today and tomorrow, but that's not going to be the situation because this thing is primarily just going to take a path straight up to the north. Now we will have a couple of extra clouds around here. One or two of those showers trying to pop up later on this afternoon into the early evening hours and then just about the same thing tomorrow. One or two of those showers kind of popping up around here, but the brunt of all that rain is going to be staying well off to the uh, east of us and we'll still have a, a stray shower or two, at least a chance of it on Saturday. Then pretty much rain gets shut off and then the heat gets cranked up. 88 degrees at noon, partly cloudy skies and a high temperature makes it up to 94 today. One or two of those showers or a storm. If you get some rain, you consider yourself very lucky, I think is the best way to put it. Same thing tomorrow, same thing on Saturday. Add a degree each of the next couple of degree days, pardon me, and then um, yeah, add a few more degrees going in there Sunday and we're looking at uh, triple digit temperatures for the 4th of July, Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay. Yeah, so after that brief little reprieve, it's back to the extreme heat. It's been so nice while it lasted. Yeah, we, mm -hmm. we enjoyed it. Now we'll have to power through next week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the next month. Yeah, Thank exactly. You. Thank you very much, Mike. 621, 75 degrees. And America's favorite pastime could be going high tech. We're gonna tell you what the commissioner of major baseball is thinking about installing at home plate. There's a different way to treat HIV. It's every other month injectable Cabinuva. For adults who are undetectable, Cabinuva is the only complete HIV treatment you can get every other month. Cabinuva helps keep me undetectable. It's two injections given by my healthcare provider every other month. It's one less thing to think about while traveling. HIV pills aren't on my mind. 
A quick change in my plans is no big deal. Don't receive Cabinuva if you're allergic to its ingredients or taking certain medicines which may interact with Cabinuva. Serious side effects include allergic reactions, post-injection reactions, liver problems, and depression. If you have a rash and other allergic reaction symptoms, stop Cabinuva and get medical help right away. Tell your doctor if you have liver problems or mental health concerns, and if you are pregnant, breastfeeding, or considering pregnancy. Some of the most common side effects include injection site reactions, fever, and tiredness. If you switch to Cabinuva, attend all treatment appointments. Every other month, and I'm good to go. Ask your doctor about every other month Cabinuva. In this morning's GMA First Look, CTE in the sport of soccer. You heard about it, but around soccer, there was no talk of CTE. There was nothing. So we had no idea. Former Major League Soccer player Scott Vermillion is the first in Major League Soccer revealed to have suffered from the condition. And now his family is opening up about his posthumous diagnosis. If we can help anybody, one person, two, however many people we can help, then to us, that makes our tragedy uh, something worth the loss of our son, dad. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll hear from a leading expert in the field of CTE about the activities that could put soccer players at risk and what preventative measures can be taken. With your GMA First Look, I'm Arielle Reshef, ABC News, New York. In today's Tech Bytes, privacy concerns for TikTok. A top FCC official is calling on Apple and Google to remove TikTok from their app stores. Commissioner Brendan Carr says there are concerns user data is being accessed in China. Spokespeople for Apple, Google, and TikTok have not yet commented. Snapchat is now offering an optional subscription. So-called power users can pay $3.99 for Snapchat Plus. Added features include the ability to rewatch a story and pin a friend to the top of your chat history as a BFF. Robot umpires could soon be coming to Major League Baseball. The commissioner says he wants an automated ball strike zone system by 2024. He says one idea is to have robot umpires transmit the call to a human umpire using an earpiece. It'll be interesting. <laughs> yes, it's going to be very interesting. <laughs> Time now, 626 and 75 degrees for now. Coming up in the next half hour, killing two birds with one stone. How to enjoy the summer outside and finish up your home to-do list. But first, a preview of today's historic appointment to the U.S. Supreme Court. We have the more with Judge Katanji Ketan Brown-Jackson, who is set to take her place on the high court in history. And Transguide, Stephen will be back with a live update right here on GMSA. And again, looking ahead to the holiday weekend forecast with Mike Ostrage, Triple Digits will be back. A teenager shot and killed just north of downtown. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. Coming up on GMSA, we'll tell you what we know. Outside with live cam, it was another beautiful sunrise uh, just a short while ago. Nice hues of orange and pink. Uh, not a bad start to a summer day, and we'll look ahead to the holiday weekend coming up with Mike Ostrage. Good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is June 30th. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining us. I hope you had a great week so far. Uh, this morning, you know, not too bad, but a little bit more humid than it was yesterday morning. That's right. Mike is here, and he's shaking his head and nodding in agreement. Yeah, a lot of that's from some of the rain that we had a couple of days ago, so this is extra moisture in the ground. These things are hoping, hopefully greening up somewhat from some of that rain. I hope you got some a couple of days ago because rain chances are just about nil for the past or the next couple of days. Yeah, good looking sunrise this morning. Temperature right now stands at 75. The normal average low is 74, so right in the ballpark. Dew points kind of up there, up to 70. So there's a fair amount of moisture in the atmosphere. Light wind out of the east at three miles per hour. We're going to have about a 10, 15, maybe 20 mile per hour wind later on this afternoon. Just a bit of a breeze, primarily out of the east. Upper 60s, low to mid 70s around the area. Again, not too far from respective normal low temperatures. Mold is on the high side. The updated count is going to come out in about, uh, say, half an hour, 45 minutes to an hour or so. And so partly cloudy skies this morning. Then I think we see a few more clouds hanging around here later on the afternoon a couple of showers couple of storms 20 percent chance very very few and far between and
basically most of us aren't going to be seeing rain today. 94 for high temperature, which 93 being the normal in the ballpark, of course. Tomorrow, 95, and then again, a storm or two. In other words, most of us won't see anything. And same thing on Saturday, and it's going to be another degree hotter on Saturday and then we really start to heat up and uh, yeah after a just brutally hot June had that little bit of a break and now it's going to be well looking like a hot first week of July details on that in just a couple of minutes traffic authority see what's going on more friends with pools <laughs> that's what yeah. I'm gonna it's gonna be going on in my department over here Mike let's get a look at the roadways right now at 632 really it's not been a bad morning actually US 90 a couples 281 at Grace and things are moving just fine in fact now would be a great time to get any errands done or maybe head out the door if you need to head to work but uh, always be on the lookout because although it's quiet here in trans guide we are seeing just a few things here on the map which are those active construction spots does look like we still are watching that crash though off uh, Bandera, but it's not really causing any issues on the main highways, but be on the lookout for a stall not far from I 10 there, uh, but we're going to be watching these roads closely. It has been a pretty quiet start uh, to this to Thursday morning, but if you have to travel in the next few minutes, just remember to give yourself plenty of time. Be courteous to other drivers out there. We're going to continue to watch these roads closely and have more updates in the next few minutes. Mark stuff. Stephen, thank you. We are starting with breaking news. San Antonio police trying to solve what appears to be a scary mystery. They found evidence that someone might be hurt at an apartment complex on the south side. So far, they have no victim. Katrina Weber is live in the 100 block of Emerald Ash with that story. And Katrina, what have you found out? Well, police uh, described what could be interpreted as a pretty eerie scene. They got a call about shots fired after 5 o'clock this morning. They arrived here at this apartment complex, found a door wide open and then a blood trail, but they found no one inside that apartment. They've been working ever since on the third floor of this building. Now, according to the map, this is the Rosemont at University Heights apartment complex. Uh, just to give you an idea of where we are, this is south of Loop 410 near Morrison Road. And police uh, say they did, in fact, find blood uh, on, the, on the landing there and then also on the sidewalk here in front of this apartment building. Now, there is a couple that lives in that apartment. Some of the woman's family have shown up and they were quite worried about what was going on. But police say that they were actually able to get in touch with that woman. She described what sounds like a home invasion. She says the minute someone kicked in her door, she ran away. And so police have determined that the woman is safe. However, the man who lives here is still missing at this point. Uh, they, do, they say that they believe maybe those gunshots, though, were fired uh, outside. They're not sure whether anyone actually got shot or if the shots were just fired into the air. But uh, so far, no sign of that man. So they don't know if he may be hurt, if he was beat up, or if he actually was shot. And that is what they're trying to figure out right now. But definitely a scary situation for the families of the people who live here, especially the, the woman's family. We've uh, actually talked to them, and they were very worried when they arrived, wondering exactly what was going on. But again, police say it looks like a home invasion, still trying to locate the man who lives in this apartment. Reporting live on the south side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New details this morning in a deadly shooting that we first told you about last night. San Antonio police searching for the shooter after a teenager was killed. Jonathan Cotto joins us live. Jonathan, what have you learned about the investigation so far? Well, right now, information is limited, Mark, but we do know police believe they have identified the suspect the vehicle. That person is still on the run. But let's take a look at what that scene looked like. The scene unfolding last night around 10 on Breck Street. That's near North Main Avenue and McCullough Avenue. Officers were initially called to a shots fired call a few blocks away, but officers could hear the gunfire in the area of Breck Street. And that's where they found the teen on the ground. He was pronounced dead at the scene. And as I mentioned, the suspect is still on the run. This is a story that we're going to continue to follow and update you online and on air. Just make sure to go to our website, ksat.com, for the latest. Reporting outside of Public Safety Headquarters, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Happening today, Uvalde City Council scheduled to hold a special meeting to discuss the Robb Elementary shooting. And today could mark Uvalde School Police Chief Pete Arredondo's first appearance at a council meeting. Arredondo's response to the day of the shooting has been a point of contention. The agenda does not say exactly what will be discussed other than listing pending litigation. We know there's been a push to obtain records as this investigation gets underway. We are continuing to follow any developments. We'll bring the latest as we learn more. Well, murder trial now over involving a suspect accused in a three-year-old's death.
Now the parents of little Rene Blancas Jr. are speaking with Kesa. We have been following the trial against Eric Trevino for weeks. He was accused of shooting the three-year-old walk. The child was sleeping in the back of his family's car on New Laredo Highway. Now that was back in 2017. His parents picked out Trevino out of a photo lineup leading to his arrest. Now a jury has acquitted Trevino of capital murder. Trevino remains in jail, facing other charges related to other crimes, including an attempted jail escape. The U.S. Supreme Court will issue its final opinions today to wrap up what has been a historic term with hugely consequential decisions affecting much of the nation. And it comes as Justice Stephen Breyer's notified the president he will officially retire from the bench today, making way for Ketanji Brown Jackson to be sworn in as the 116th justice to our Supreme Court. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the details. Today, the end of an era as Justice Stephen Breyer hangs up his robe and officially steps down from the Supreme Court bench after nearly three decades. The 83-year-old justice announcing his retirement back in January. Thank you, Mr. President. People have come to accept this Constitution, and they've come to accept the importance of a rule of law. Among his final acts on the high court today, Breyer will swear in his replacement, his own former law clerk, Judge Katanji Brown Jackson. The change is not expected to shift the ideological balance of the conservative majority court. She will take both oaths, officially becoming the first black woman uh, on the United States Supreme Court. She will then become also the fourth woman on the Supreme Court as we head into a new term later this fall. The history-making day comes nearly a week after the Supreme Court overturned federal abortion rights for women, My body, my triggering at least 13 states to seize nearly all abortion services. Abortion rights advocates currently mounting legal challenges in several states, while states like Illinois fill the gap. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It is so heartbreaking to see patients who've had to travel so far to get basic health care. Today, the Supreme Court also on track to hand down more consequential decisions before ending the remarkably divisive term. The justices will rule on whether the EPA has the authority to aggressively regulate planet warming emissions from power plants, which could severely limit the power of the EPA to fight climate change. They'll also decide whether the Biden administration can end the Trump era policy called remain in Mexico. It requires asylum seekers arriving at the southern border to wait in Mexico pending an immigration court decision. And once the court's term ends today, we'll also find out which other major cases the justices plan to take up when they return in the fall. Some of the current petitions include a challenge to federal health care worker vaccine mandate and a case about flight attendants, which could affect air travel and prices. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. President Joe Biden, along with other NATO leaders, wrapped up meetings today during the final day of the NATO summit in Spain. A major focus of the summit, the war in Ukraine. It's not clear right now whether any of the steps taken this week to respond to the war can stop Russia's momentum. That includes new sanctions and more military aid. Before returning to Washington, Biden will convene a news conference where he is expected to address the state of the war. His top agent says the U.S. assessment of the conflict remains, quote, grim. A familiar name returns to power in the Philippines. Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has been officially sworn in as that country's next president. The new leader took the oath of office in a ceremony in the capital of Manila earlier today. Marcos Jr. won the presidential election in a landslide back in May with more than 30 million Filipinos casting their ballots for him. He'll be taking over from outgoing leader Rodrigo Duterte and is set to begin a six-year term in office. Marcos Jr., a member of one of the Philippines' most notorious political families. You may remember his father ruled the country through a brutal dictatorship that ended in an uprising back in 1986. Time now, 640 and 74 degrees for now. Coming up, how to take advantage of summer break. To finally start and finish your home projects. That's next in our Ask Angie segment. Welcome back, 644. If you're looking for an excuse to get outside and enjoy the summer while also being productive, look no further than your home itself. In this morning's Ask Angie segment, here are some tips on tackling some of the top summer home projects. The better weather and longer days in the summertime can make it the perfect opportunity to get those projects done that you haven't had time to do over the winter. Consider power or pressure washing the exterior of your home to get off the winter grime and give it a fresh new look. You'll also want to think about repairing or restaining a deck or fence. 
These are regular home maintenance projects that increase your home's curb appeal. This is great to do right before the season of outdoor entertaining. Every season comes with its own challenges and required maintenance. Most flowers and plants thrive in the spring, but your yard may need some help staying in top condition throughout the summer, especially here. Summer months are a great time to trim your trees or bushes and fertilize your lawn and install a new sprinkler system to keep your lawn looking healthy for months to come. Some summer days might just be too hot to do those outdoor projects, but there's plenty to do inside too. Consider installing a ceiling fan or replacing or sealing windows, which can help keep your home cool on those hot days. You may also want to take on some projects that will help you in future seasons. This could be installing new insulation to keep your home warm in the winter or even installing a fireplace. Anybody think she lives in Texas? No. <laughs> no? Okay. If you haven't cleaned out your gutters and downspouts in a while, now is a great time to ask Mike to do it for you. Yeah. <laughs> Block gutters can lead to water damage and increase in pests. Clear out your gutters now and protect your home from future storms, whenever that might possibly ever happen here yeah. again. Exactly. All right. You'll be getting a lot of emails, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Request, request for help. File in now. Let's check in on traffic 646. Here's Stephen with an update. I will definitely be the first request, Mike. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> tomorrow. 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 Well, it's a weekend. We got to take a break from each other. No, we'll do it tomorrow. Okay. okay. All right. Why not? <laughs> All right. Let's take a look at traffic right now. 37 looks pretty quiet. I've actually really enjoyed today. There's not really been a whole lot of issues out there on the roadways. We've had a few stalls, but those are quickly clearing out. We did have one crash earlier in the morning uh, or incident. I should say that was leading to some slowdowns off of 410, but looks like that has cleared out as well. Right now, just a lot of those active construction spots and of course those stalls. We have one reported here off of 35 in the southbound lanes, northbound lanes, pardon me, a thousand oaks, not causing any issues, but if your commute is going to take you up through Live Oak. You got to make sure you watch out for that and check your vehicles before you get out on the roadways. Pretty quick traffic hit here. Not a whole lot else to talk about. Just remember to drive safe. We'll be back with another one in just a few minutes. You know, the, the trick is to that. Yeah, tomorrow never comes. Tomorrow. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, it's like the sign in the bar. Free beer tomorrow. Oh, OK, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> if you do, I installed gutter guards years ago and so that was a godsend to do that's but the gutter screen guard. over yeah, the top. screen the screen over the top to keep the leaves. leaves and stuff from getting oh, out I like yeah. all that stuff, but mm -hmm. if you're unsafe on a ladder don't do it okay no, Just, no. yeah get somebody to do it so all right beautiful picture there over matagor harbor oh my goodness gracious it, it, where's the sea? You can just hear the seagulls right now. So that's a great shot there. All right. Speaking of uh, great pictures, there is the sun coming up and it's going to be a beautiful morning. All right. This is not necessarily an encouraging uh, picture looking at the six to 10 day outlook. This is from the Climate Prediction Center, and this is not uh, showing actual temperatures, but it's basically the odds of being either above or below normal temperatures. And we've got fairly good odds of being definitely on the hot side as we go into the second week of uh, ju uh, July and going in toward the uh, the 10th of July. So yeah, it is not uh, not looking good as far as that's concerned. All right, as far as today, temperatures are going to be a lot closer to normal. We're at 75 right now, which is within a degree of the normal low temperature. We're going to make it up through the 80s as the morning rolls on 88 degrees at noon, and then we're going to top off at 94 later on today, which 93 being the normal high temperature. So pretty much what you would expect for the last day of June. 20% chance for a stray shower, uh, thunderstorm or two, very few and far between. So it's unfortunately, like I've been emphasizing all morning long, not going to be a repeat of what we had a couple of days ago. Satellite and radar picture, a couple of showers are already popping up well off here to the east. And that's where most of the rain is going to be. We've been watching this disturbance out here in the Gulf of Mexico. This thing is going to be moving straight up there to the north, keeping the majority of rain over by Houston. And for us, we may again a little couple of disturbances, a couple of extra clouds get thrown on in around that counterclockwise rotation, and that's pretty much going to be about it. Got some activity up to the north, but notice how everything's moving roughly straight west to east. So this time of year, all we can do is look down to the, uh, the tropics, but unfortunately, there's not a heck of a lot going on. And down here, just uh, on the northern edges of South America, Hurricane Center is still watching very disorganized batch of clouds there. It's saying it's a potential 
tropical development or, or tropical depression uh, if it does indeed develop and even if it doesn't but right now the flow is just taking this thing pretty much straight to the west so we're not going to get any benefit from that I mean maybe maybe way down the road something but between I mean for the foreseeable future between now and way down the road nothing in the offing as far as any decent rain chance it's just those one or two showers that may pop up the next couple of days 88 at noon today partly cloudy skies high temperatures going to make it up to 94 a couple of showers one or two of them out there again most of us are not going to be seeing rain we still keep at least a small chance of rain in the forecast tomorrow as well as on saturday one or two of them out there gonna hover right around the mid 90s and then Rain chances are out of the picture and the heat gets cranked back up 98 on Sunday and for the 4th of July and the first uh, few days of next week, triple digits. I think it's worth mentioning again. We saw yesterday the city of Bernie's canceled their big yeah. fireworks show due to safety concerns. Everything's just so darn dry. Yeah, we can see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't you, you know, just just put it off if, put it if off you can. If you can. Thank you, Mike. 10 till 7, 74 degrees. And another look outside with a live cam. Beautiful shot there as we hang on to the 90s this week. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the holiday travel getaway. The best and worst time to hit the road this July 4th weekend and what to expect if you're headed to the airport. Also, our exclusive interview with Congresswoman Liz Cheney, one of two Republicans on the January 6th committee in her first interview since the hearing started. That and so much more on a Thursday edition of Good Morning America. San Antonio police believe they've identified the vehicle of the suspect involved in killing a teenager last night. Good morning. I'm Jonathan Cotto. That suspect is still on the run. The scene unfolding last night around 10 on Breck Street. That's near North Main Avenue and McCullough Avenue. Officers were initially called to a shots fired call a few blocks away, but officers could hear the gunfire in the area of Breck Street. That's where they found the teen on the ground. He was pronounced dead at the scene. And as I mentioned, the suspect is still on the run. This is a story that we're going to continue to follow closely on air and online at KSAT.com. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right, time right now is 6.55. Go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Well, our system just froze up on me right now, but we have been watching the roads pretty closely. You can see it right there. Even though it's frozen on the screen right now, we've really just had stalls out there. And while I wait for my system to reboot, we're going to continue to track traffic throughout the morning. But thankfully, it has been off to a pretty decent start. There it is, I-10 at Ralph Fair. Really haven't spotted any major issues on the roadway. Just again, a lot of those stalled vehicles that you got to be on the lookout for and make sure you check your vehicle as well. As a reminder, there's several active construction spots that we're going to continue to watch throughout the morning. But for now, let's check in with Mike Osterhage. Thank you, sir. Boy, take a look at this picture. What a gorgeous, gorgeous sunrise this morning and temperature right now. We've actually dropped down a degree. That is the normal low right now. 74, 73, both uh, Port SA as well as over there in Converse 75 Stinson. Throughout the day, we're going to make it up to 94. One or two of those showers out there. Um, rain chances are not that great. Don't get your hopes up for it. Same thing the next couple of days, then it's going to be hot as we go on into the 4th and the 5th and 6th. Yes, it is. Thank yeah. you, guys. Prepare. Well, thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here at 9. Good Morning America is next.